Nikita Mazepin is disappointed to have been dropped from Haas, while Russia has been dropped from the calendar. You can now watch full 24-minute episodes of The Inside Line at our official home on unbeaten.com. Former Haas F1 driver Nikita Mazepin has done the only thing he can do after losing his 2022 race drive, voice his disappointment on social media. Mazepin's contract, along with that of Haas's title sponsor Ural Kali, which is owned by his billionaire oligarch father Dmitry, was terminated last week, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The 23-year-old, however, was left puzzled by the swift action. While I understand the difficulties, the ruling from the FIA, plus my ongoing willingness to accept the conditions proposed in order to continue, were completely ignored, and no process was followed in this unilateral step, said Mazepin on social media. F1's run in Russia is done after the sport terminated its race contract with promoters in Sochi and St. Petersburg. F1 was set to host its final race at Sochi Autodrome this year in September before a switch to the Agora Drive Circuit in 2023. But while F1 stated it was impossible to host the race following Russia's horrific ongoing invasion of Ukraine, Sochi promoters took that to mean it was suspended and instructed fans to retain tickets. F1 has since taken further action to send the strongest possible message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Formula One can confirm it has terminated its contract with the Russian Grand Prix promoter, meaning Russia will not have a race in the future, the statement read. Max Verstappen will stay at Red Bull Racing long term, with the Dutchman having inked a new Megabucks deal, reported to be worth 55 million US dollars a year until at least the end of 2028. The reigning F1 world champion was originally signed to the end of next season, but Red Bull opened talks as early as last month to lock down its star driver and major asset in readiness for the future. Red Bull continues to charge on with its powertrains business, ahead of a potential future partnership with Porsche, making Verstappen a crucial pin to securing that manufacturer tie-up. Especially with the Dutchman eager to stick with the brand. I just feel really good at this team and I really enjoy working with the people in, you know, in every department. So, um, and especially of course after winning the championship last year, yeah, for me, it's the best team out there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I want to stay. A rejuvenated Valtteri Bottas, now at Alfa Romeo, has admitted it was an honor to drive alongside Sir Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes for five years, with the Finn calling him a living legend. Bottas left Mercedes at the end of 2021 to join Alfa Romeo, and while he says he's ready for a new challenge and has reset his expectations, he's also come to terms with his record against the top Brit. He's a great, great guy and great driver, really fast. He definitely made me to work hard to try and beat him. Sometimes I could, but on, on a season average, I couldn't. So um, that's how it goes. You always meet eventually someone who's better than you. and. Uh, yeah, you need to accept it and I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm happy that sometimes I could be, when I was at my best, that I could beat him. New Williams pilot Alex Albon says he learned a lot from the team's senior advisor, 2009 F1 world champion Jensen Button, on a pre-season trip to the Brits' now American hometown, Los Angeles. Albon joins Williams this year to race the new FW44, following a season spent on the sidelines with Red Bull. But a fun day out with Button gave him vital insight into the shift from Milton Keynes to Grove. Jensen and I, we, we met up in LA, uh, went karting together. Of course, Jensen, he, um, he's very experienced, so not only did we just uh, try and uh, one-up each other on the kart track, but we also just talked about, you know, um, his experience and 
his experience of going through into different teams as well as working at Williams. Ferrari's F175 is set to remain in mostly Barcelona spec for the second Bahrain test this week to better understand its 2022 car. The prancing horse launched its new era F1 car with a striking new look last month and showed ominous pace at the opening test, enough to be considered a potential intruder to the front of the grid. But while the Scuderia's rivals Mercedes and Red Bull are set to bring substantial update packages, Ferrari is holding back. I think that the first step for us will be to optimize what we have, said team boss Mattia Bonotto. We are still far from the best performance, not only because we are running high fuel and not the best engine mode, but simply because there is a lot to exploit more from the car itself. Aston Martin is considering upgrading its F1 squad to a works effort from 2026, with the brand gunning for a future title charge. F1's green team is currently supplied by Mercedes, but has the ambitions and budget from its billionaire owner, Lawrence Stroll, to match the silver squad. And the time is right to look at upping its game. 2026 is mooted as a new power unit regulation, and I think, as a team, we'd love to be involved, said technical chief Andrew Green. Aston Martin would be following Red Bull's example in setting up its own engine facility, ensuring everything was under one roof. The brand's new team principal, Mike Crack, has worked with electric and hybrid cars, having overseen BMW's efforts in Formula E and Porsche's LMP1 project in the World Endurance Championship. Saudi Arabia has outlined changes to the Jeddah Corniche circuit, aimed at improving driver visibility along the 6.174 kilometer lap. Jeddah is set to host its second F1 event in four months, with the Saudi Arabian round held back-to-back -back with the Bahrain season opener. The barriers will be pushed back at turns 2, 3, 14, 21 and 27, while barriers at turns 4, 16, 22 and 24 will have a steel plate installed, so the drivers can get even closer to brush against it all of which should improve sight lines throughout the circuit. F1's fastest street venue, Saudi Arabia's Jeddah winds its way along the Corniche with 27 turns, 16 left, 11 right. With hairpin bends at either end and the track's top speed of over 320 kilometers per hour achieved on the run down to the final corner. The average speed there is over 250, making it second only to Temple of Speed Monza. The Saudi track has three DRS zones, each with its own detection point, ensuring plenty of chances to overtake in the night event. Michael Schumacher's iconic 1998 Hungarian Grand Prix winning car, the F300, is up for private sale with an asking price of 4.9 million US dollars. The car was made famous in Budapest when Schumacher pulled out 19 straight qualifying laps during the race to overhaul the 25 seconds needed to beat McLaren's David Coulthard for the win. With the title fight going down to the wire in Japan. In the past two occasions, whoever was in front would win the championship now even I win the race, I not win the championship. So it's a different uh, situation, but still I feel confident. However, a DNF for Schumacher with the same chassis in Suzuka after famously stalling on the formation lap meant that the German lost the F1 crown to rival McLaren's Mika Hakkinen. F1 tracks could soon feature innovative fencing after the FIA approved a new product from Swiss firm Geobrug that's not only safer but better for fans with improved visibility of the tarmac. The new fencing has been approved for use on FIA grade one circuits used for F1 and has been designed to better catch cars at racing speeds with six, not four meters between posts. 
The Geobrook fencing has undergone extensive real-world testing, which has included an impact with a car at 150 kilometers per hour. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.